Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation. Uh, I'm excited to see so many people interested in boring stuff like defining APIs. So uh, we try to keep this uh, fresh. And uh, this is more about like welcoming everyone to the conversation. We just want to build new APIs to make things easier for multi-cluster. So uh, let's just start by saying that defining APIs is hard from the name itself. So I think you all came to introducing inventory cluster and cluster feature API. Uh, the names have gone to many iterations, and there is actually a poll at the end of the presentation on where we are setting new names to the API. So every time we run a SIG multi-cluster meeting, we propose new names. So welcome, <laughs> again, to cluster inventory and no feature group API talk. Uh, it, it keeps changing, so maybe at the end of this talk, it's going to be a different name. Uh, my name, Carlos. Uh, my co-speaker, Ryan, I'm from NVIDIA, he's from Microsoft, and we will try to keep this light and uh, interesting as possible. Uh, who am I? Uh, first time in real life KubeCon. I, I did presentations during the pandemic, but uh, for those who never had seen me, I've been around the container industry for like seven years or so, and uh, now we work at NVIDIA at the Cloud Native team, basically trying to enable GPUs into Kubernetes and make things easier for all of you. And uh, Ryan. Hello. Uh, my name is Ryan, and this is also my first KubeCon. It's great that uh, the first KubeCon can get to talk to so many people here. Um, who am I? Um, I am currently uh, working in Azure Kubernetes service. I'm a, a principal SDM. And in my previous life, uh, I worked on, on KubeVela and uh, OAM as a founding member. I don't know how many of you remember OAM. And, uh, and before that, uh, way before that, I did a PhD in uh, grid computing. Again, I don't know how many of you know what grid computing is, but uh, that's not the point. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about uh, a multi-cluster. And uh, in this talk, um, we are, I'm going to first give you a brief history of multi-cluster. And then I will present the motivations and then we are going to have some deep dive into the two APIs that we are proposing and developing. At the end, there's a Q&A session. Um, before that, uh, let's do some data-driven presentation. Um, how many of you are working with Kubernetes clusters um, hands-on? Oh, oh, great, this is KubeCon, nice. <laughs> how many of you have only one cluster? You can, you can leave. This is not tall enough for you. <laughs> but how many of you have 10, more than 10? Wow, well, still a lot. 100? Oh, OK. 1,000? OK, talk to me after, after the talk. Huh? You, you are my audience. Oh, I'm just kidding now. You're, you're all good. Yeah, so um, it's clear that um, a multi-cluster is a it's something that we are all dealing with it. And uh, it is something that uh, almost starts when the Kubernetes or the cloud native movement starts. Because we all foreseen that there are going to be multi-clusters. However, um, um, oh, another thing is, uh, interestingly, I think I've been to at least two multi-cluster talks every day ever since in this Kubica. And in this morning, there's a multi-cloud talk. And I was, it was from Google, uh, between Google and, uh, and the Microsoft. I was like, wow, they, they are two uh, working together. And then I went there, it turned out to be another multi-cluster talk. And um, lots of people actually cannot get in. I waited outside for like 10 minutes before I get, they let, let me in. So if any of you uh, were not able to get into that talk, uh, these two slides basically uh, zoom through whatever they talked, so, so you are not missing anything. So okay, so when we when we uh, talk about uh, multi-cluster, the first thing I think comes to my mind is um, cluster management. Um, so namely, basically um, creating, deleting, upgrading your clusters, right? That, that's the basic. And uh, I think many of you think you're really the good audience here. You know that when you have maybe one or two or maybe five clusters, they're cute, right? You just the babysitting them, upgrading and put every patch, CVEs. You, they're cute. But then when you grow to 10, 15, they're like becoming teenagers. They rebel. They, all, all, all stuff, then you get headaches. So that is kind of the first problem all the cluster management uh, uh, face. Um, 
in this front, I think there are some uh, community solutions and, and some uh, proprietary solutions. For example, you have Terraform, you have, I think, um, what else you have? You have a cluster API, right? And uh, for the pro pro uh, proprietary ones, uh, AWS has cloud formation, uh, and then there's Rancher that is not really a, a cloud provider, but they, they show me a demo somewhere. They look pretty good. You can see all your clusters. You click, click, each one get upgraded happily in that demo. And, uh, and then you have GKE. GKE, I don't know if there's any GKE people here. GKE has a rollout sequence. Um, basically, they take care of the rollout. And uh, Azure has the Azure Kubernetes fleet manager. You have we have uh, stages, groups, all, all sorts of things you can think of to make sure that your, you can upgrade your whole fleet uh, safely and happily. Um, at least that's the goal. And then we have this cluster configuration. It's kind of similar, but a little bit different, uh, such as um, you need to uh, rotate your certificate. You need to do capacity management, um, access management. Um, GKE also has a pretty very um, detailed, uh, what's that called, a config sync um, solutions there. And uh, I think Terraform and other cluster APIs can solve that problem, sort of. And plus, you just throw in whatever your favorite script language is. That, that, that part, I think, is relatively OK. But, but, um, but we all know that. Again, just some poll. How many of you guys have upgraded a cluster and then your application stop working, right? Yeah, and how many of you have has like nightmares or lose sleep before you wanna click that upgrade button on your, on your cluster, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so the key actually is not the, the reason I ask this is the key is actually not the cluster upgrade, it's the application. The, the cluster could be upgraded successfully or, or thought of, but actually your application stopped working, right? So the application management is is that a real, real deal, right? We, we don't just create a cluster f for fun. Some application needs to run on that. So the multi-cluster application management is the next um, forefront that we are trying to tackle. Um, I would not repeat, again, if you have been to those multi-cluster talks, they are going to give you 10 reasons why you want to do multi-cluster applications. I'm not going to repeat those. Um, just assuming that you, you have these needs. So the first thing coming to my mind, or everybody's mind, is workload scheduling, right? You have an application on multiple clusters. Then you need to decide where to go, when to go, how many of them are going there. Right? That, that's, and there are a lot of um, community-based uh, solutions out there. Uh, that part, I won't say is solved, but it's, there are solutions there. And then there's, there's traffic splitting. This is mostly, I'm talking about uh, north and south traffic, right? If you have a workload, unless it's like, uh, uh, silent guy just sitting there doing nothing. Um, someone needs to talk to it. And then there's this traffic splitting. I'm not aware of any real good solutions out there. It still is wor works. It still works for everything. But it not always work. Right? Anybody who has deal with it still knows. Um, it's great when it's great. Um, but then uh, every uh, cloud provider has their own solutions. Global load balancers, traffic managers, front or whatever you call it. You can put them all together. Maybe there's some customized solutions. And then there's cross-cluster communications, basically east-west. Um, there's a multi, I probably have a aware of this or if not. There's a multi-cluster service API that is in the multi-cluster SIG. Is we are in the middle of trying to revive it. It's been V1 Alpha 1 for maybe three years. Um, but that's, that, that is a community API. So we are talking APIs, right? We, we are happy with just APIs. And then, um, the real deal, I think, for the multi-class application is really disaster recovery. I've, I think, again, I've been to like at least two talks about uh, multi-class every day. The, 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 the application manager or those um, um, vendor companies, they have to do that because, for example, there's a Bloomberg, right? Bloomberg, they have to have those disaster recoveries. Any serious business have to have a disaster recovery story there. Otherwise, their managers, their boss are not going to be happy. Um, so the, but this disaster recovery is not like just put two applications onto the different um, cluster and, and they automatically work. There are actually tons of manual steps if, if you're not careful, right? You need to 
find the capacity. Someone just uh, think if you have traffic splitting going to cluster one and cluster two, when cluster one goes down, if the traffic just goes through cluster two, it works. It won't work. Cluster two doesn't have the capacity. It, it, will, uh, it will just over, overwhelm this cluster. If you don't have cluster uh, um, capacity management there, it, it won't work. Auto scale need to work, so all these things. And then you also need to do carefully do the traffic splitting. Right. And then finally, there is actually not the least there, I, hard to uh, enumerate everything. There's this batch scheduling. It's different from workload because the batch jobs are a lot less, um, it's not long lasting. It's more um, uh, short lived and only works and then go. And then you have more chances to uh, balance the workload or the utilizations between clusters. For a workload like a traditional service, you stay there, it's happily running for, could be for for days or even for months before you can move it. In, in, a, re, in a serious, um, serious uh, enterprise, normally they don't want you to touch their applications. So they, are, they are very careful. But batch is a totally different story. So those are the application management. And then we have this uh, hybrid part, like the fleet management. I, call it, I don't have a better word. Naming is hard. You, you will know why. Naming is definitely, definitely hard. We, I just call it fleet management. For example, there's an identity federation. What does that mean is um, when you have your application running in one cluster, and then normally you need to talk to some um, dependency services, especially in the, in the cloud provider world, right? Then you need credentials. But when your application is into multiple clusters, how do you make sure that they would talk to the same service or talk to a global service using the same identity? That's also not a given, right? And another super difficult problem is I don't think there are good solutions out there is observability. There are two parts. One is the cluster observability. That part probably is less, um, is, is more solved. That means you have hundreds of clusters like you guys, look, you guys do, right? You need to know their utilization, any of them are dead or, or happy, not happy. Uh, should I bring some more cluster into that because um, it, the capacity is, is really low in one region? That, that's the observability of the cluster level. And then there's, I think it's that the part is, I'm not aware of any good solutions out there, is the application observability, right? If you have your application onto multiple clusters, how do you get the idea of the, the application actually is running you don't have that one glass of panel there that you can see everything. You can go to each cluster, right? Each cluster you can see, but you don't have the high level picture of the application. Um, that's another very difficult problem. I think I spent a little bit too much time on this. Then just, just I combine these two, uh, last two together. And then there's team management, right? So you have a fleet of, manage, fleet of clusters. You have a bunch of teams, right? In, I guess, most of companies, you have different departments or different teams. Then you want to basically assign each team to maybe a, a part of the cluster or th many different ways. But you need to do quota management. You need to do assess management. Who can talk, who can use what at what capacities? Right, those are also hard problems to solve. Okay, I kind of spend a little bit more time on that. Um, the, just, just I think the takeaway is, uh, uh, is pretty straightforward, right? This is a very huge problem domain, and uh, the solutions out there are not nearly good enough to solve these problems. And uh, we are working with the SIG multi-cluster uh, projects. Um, so I don't know, again, the, this morning's talk talk about the KubiFed. There's a KubiFed V1 and V2, both died pretty sadly uh, with different reasons. If you want to know, I can, because for the, for the time being, I'm not going to get into details. These both are, uh, these two are actually implementations. So these two actually come with a full-fledged implementation that you are supposed to be able to just install on your clusters and work. Sadly, as I kind of, alluded to, the problem is just so difficult, it's hard to find those solutions. And then the, our, the, the six start to learn our lessons and then focus mostly on, a, mostly on APIs. So here we have work API. I'm not sure if anyone have heard of that. That's good, great. Um, work API is kind of a, a primitive way for a building block for the member class or workload clusters talking to a management cluster. Right there. Uh, if any of you know KubiFed V2, one of the problem of KubiFed V2 is for any customized uh, resources, 
you kind of have to wrap it. So for every customized resource, you have a federated resource, which, which I would say I don't know why people start to think that's a good idea. So what can uh, overcome that? So that now we don't have to, basically we are doing a, this, a, a JSON format of that whole blob of data and treat it this way. Um, and then there's about API. Honestly, I'm not sure what it is about. Um, and then there's MCS API. Uh, that, is, that is for the east-west, um, the service, import service export. That's, a, that's an API that uh, I think we're reviving it. We're trying to push it to V1, because it is actually useful. So anyway, I think, the, I think it's pretty straightforward, uh, uh, easy to see the state of the art is um, everybody still treat their cluster as a pet. You pet it, you make sure it doesn't die, you, you look after it, right? And uh, with a, a tons of customized solutions. Again, I attended a talk in Bloomberg. I don't know if someone from Bloomberg is here. Um, they, they create a cluster with two APIs. One API server talks to a Postgres um, SQL database globally replicated. And then one API server talks to the normal ETCD. After talk and the QA, I still didn't figure out how these two APIs work in, a, in one cluster. And uh, then there's uh, Elastic. I don't know if any Elastic person is here. Um, they basically get rid of API server and ETCD at all. They just re they rewrite the whole control plan. And uh, the only thing they make sure is the controller runtime still works with their customized server. It's not even API server anymore. I don't know what it is. So those are the customized solutions. Um, that works, I think, um, for their uh, specific uh, use case. But uh, what we are looking at is uh, from the SIG multi-cluster point of view is we are trying to build something that is um, community-driven and uh, more um, generic than some very specific solutions. OK, so I hope by now I don't really need to get into the motivation part. Everybody probably is already very motivated to, to get a common solution here. So here are some of, of the notable open source multi-cluster uh, projects here. Uh, one is OCM. I probably most people have heard of that. That's from uh, Red Hat. Uh, and the ClusterNet. ClusterNet is another CNCF project that is mostly coming out of uh, Tencent. And then there's the a Fleet Manager. Um, I kind of built that uh, project. Uh, it's open sourced, uh, but not too many people know that. And then. There are dozens of, I probably one of you guys have built something similar already. There's Kubi Admiral and something else. That is from ByteDance. They recently made a big deal of open sourcing it. Uh, and then the interesting thing is this. There's Q. I don't know how many of you know what Q is. You probably have heard of that. Um, and there's Kubi Vela and there's Argo CD. I guess everybody knows Argo CD. And uh, they are not, strictly speaking, a multi-cluster project at all, but they all need to, need to deal with multi-cluster. So Q has a multi-Q. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll get into that uh, just in the next slides. So now we, with all these uh, different projects, the basically OCM, ClusterNet, and the Fleet Manager, the maintainers of these three, three projects, we come together and uh, you know just hash out something. And we're like, yeah, this just so fragmented, so many different uh, peacemaking solutions. We are trying to build uh, a community, build this community up, uh, get some common ground. So here are some principles we are trying to uh, adhere to. The first, we want to make sure that multi-cluster is cl uh, still cloud native or Kubernetes native. We are not going to reinvent uh, API server, uh, get rid of etcd. No, we are going to stick to the upstream. If Kubernetes getting to a, a Postgres uh, SQL Server, that, that's okay. But we, we are not going to do that. And also, we are going to focus on APIs but because we already have so many solutions out there. Uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. And also, because as I mentioned, just I, I spent like five minutes on those problem spaces. There's no way we can tackle all of them. So we want to start very small. You, you, were, go, you were kind of surprised how small it is. Um, we want to start from a very specific problem. And uh, that problem is uh, how do you represent a cluster inventory? Very straightforward. Look at, uh, so in the, from OCM, ClusterNet, Fleet Manager, we all have a prod, uh, resource, basically it's a CRD, representing a cluster inventory. 
Uh, and the name is like managed cluster, member cluster. But interesting thing is that from the Kubivela, Kubivela, I don't know how many of you know that, it's an application model. It's an application model, yeah, right? But application model, as I said, you have multi-cluster applications. How do you represent that? They also need a way to represent a cluster inventory. And that's Q. Q is basically uh, scheduling, uh, scheduling jobs, GAN scheduler. But same thing, if when you start to want to uh, scheduling into multi-clusters, they need a way to represent a cluster. In that case, they call it multi-queue cluster. Right. And now we are like, yeah, everybody has that. Why not just have a common interface instead of everybody has basically reinvent uh, different wheels, like wooden wheel, gold wheel. Um, we try to get this one single wheel. That, that's the whole point of this um, motivation and the whole point of this uh, talk, kind of. And uh, um, yeah, so the, the real benefit of that is if we have this um, common API, then two things can happen. One is we can all start to build on top of that. And then the third, second thing is the more important part is the, the third party applications like Argo CD, Q, Kubivela could integrate with any of those multi-cluster projects without tied up to those projects. For example, actually I, I have an example just uh, later on, but really high level, uh, this request is coming from Argo CD. Argo CD needs to basically, you know, GitOps and uh, uh, put their application, they, they have a, uh, they have a CRD called application set, right? So they want to move, put their uh, resources onto different clusters, but they do not want to integrate with OCM, ClusterNet, Fleet Manager, and blah, 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 dozen of them. They want to integrate with just one of them, what, with the common APIs, and then it works. Everybody works, and then, then we, in this way, we can build up the community. Uh, and again, I'll show, show how this works uh, in the next few slides. The non goal is we are not going to provide a standard uh, implementation just like a Kubi Fed v1, v2, v3, whatever. And uh, we're not going to define uh, implementation guidelines. How do you implement that? And uh, we're not going to, uh, at first at least, in this API, we're not going to uh, offer any scheduling based uh, uh, functionality guidance. That's the next step. But for this API, it's a purely just cluster inventory. Okay. With all that, I'm going to get into the details uh, of this uh, cluster inventory API. Here is an example, um, very simple examples API, if you can see that. Um, so basically, first thing, first thing is the naming is, is not, is to be determined. <laughs> so cluster, inventory, inventory, cluster, cluster, whatever. Naming is to be determined. But what it has is, for the spec, you can see it's a very simple spec. It only has two fields display name and a cluster manager. Here the display name basically is for human to read uh, because we, we have this name uniqueness there, there's, it's a long story. And then there's a cluster manager. The cluster manager basically means what is, in, in our case will be OCM or fleet manager or um, cluster net, or you have your own favorite uh, multi-cluster projects, bring it, in, bring it in. If they support this API, they can be this cluster manager. But the, the real important part is in the status. We have a version, which I think is pretty obvious, self-explanatory, and then we have properties. The properties basically, as you can see, is just the key value pairs, right? Then that means you can put in anything. Basically, if it's a string, you can put that in. And then you have conditions. Currently, we only have two conditions, um, health, and it's actually control plane health. What literally translates into that is in all your components in your control plane have the health check uh, passed, right? The container have this um, health pass. And then there's a joint, whether this joint basically is a heartbeat. Okay, um, that's it. That, that, that's the whole API, right? I, I, I know what you guys are thinking, right? After 15, 20 minutes of hype, that, that's it, right? It's kind of like a <laughs> I didn't expect any claps here. I thought it would be a boost. Um, um, yeah, it's like look at giant nothing burger, right? What's this? Um, I'll show you why this is important. 
So here is the powerful where, where it becomes powerful. So here's an, uh, the, the link is an Argo workflow uh, issue. So the issue is basically say we want to use uh, cluster inventory API, whatever name it is. Because the Argo workflows, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Argo workflow. Uh, actually, I'm not. But just looking at this, uh, uh, if you can see this um, example, you can see that there's a name. The name, the inputs, is called a cluster inventories. So that means this, and the, the name, the, the cluster inventory name is called cluster one. The powerful part is you don't have to explain anymore. It's just a cluster inventory. Argo would know what a cluster inventory fields are. For now, it's like nothing. Actually, it's not really nothing, but it's limited. But it's, you don't need to talk to, Argo doesn't have to integrate with anything else. With that, they already have this common interface to integrate with. And then inside that, in the arguments, you can, if you can see that, in the arguments, it says the inputs.clusterinventories.cluster1.name. Right, it basically, it can templating these fields into the into their CRDs and into their arguments. So, it immediately they could use this templating value within their workflow. And uh, in the future, Argo workflows has the potential to leverage the in class inventory to do uh, scheduling, which is uh, almost always the next thing people are thinking about. So this is an example. Let me, see. yeah, okay. So again. Currently, it looks like a nothing burger, but this burger will get bigger. We have plenty of um, roadmaps uh, ahead of us. Um, the first thing, we actually had a first unconference talk uh, upstairs yes, uh, two days ago about credentials. The really nice part is, as soon as we bring this cluster infantry API into the SIG multi-cluster, different projects notice that they realized that this is a good API to integrate with. So the credential ask was coming from Q. Actually, I didn't know Q before that, but they, they came up and then I realized, oh, this, this is actually a very important uh, um, application there, or important project there. And uh, so we are going to talk about how do we add credentials, push model, pull model, spec versus status, uh, sequence, uh, uh, reference model, Read only, you, you get it how difficult it is to just add one or two fields into that API. That's why we currently we have this pretty much schemaless, schemaless um, APIs. And also, the key part, I think, if I can get back to this, is the real value is in the condition and the properties. I want to make sure that we get that. The properties currently is very loosely defined, but in the future, we would like to really define the real properties, such as allocatable memories, CPUs, especially nowadays, GPUs. How do you find the GPUs in a cluster, right? That's a very common problem for everybody. GPUs are like uh, weighing gold. Um, you cannot find them. And if you, ha if you have one, you want to use it 100%. How do you do that? For a meta-scheduler point of view, you need to know where the GPUs are, how they're doing, right? Cluster health, that's another unsolvable problem, like, right? If I think most of the cluster means would hope you can have one single signal say this cluster is healthy, which means not just the cluster healthy, but all the applications are ha happily running there, right? We need something like that. And finally, we have this uh, roadmap. Um, I'm in, for the time being, I'm just going to zoom past it. Mostly the first thing is we want to have more consumers and uh, um, provide integrations. So the for the three uh, um, members in, in this, um, in like the founding member, founding group of this project, we are all going to integrate. We are the providers, like OCM, ClusterNet, Fleet Managers. We are all. Oh. Oh, Yaku. Oh. Uh, this is Nimisen. Hold on. Uh, we are all going to support that, but uh, um, we need more consumers. So we now have uh, multi queue. We have. Argo, and if any of uh, you are working on some projects, we definitely would like to hear from you guys. And then, is that final one? Yeah, is the final one, yeah, right? 
as uh, Carlos uh, mentioned, naming is hard. If you have your phone, you are coming at a really good time that uh, we are having a survey. We really, we spent three sessions um, in the multi-cluster meeting just to discuss what is a proper name. We come back and forth, English grammar, we, we get into marine webs or whatever, precisely define what is a class infantry. We cannot agree, so that's why we have this naming survey. So I think after this talk, you kind of have enough background of what this is about. Hopefully, uh, you can have um, enough opinion to vote. There's cluster, cluster record, cluster profile, cluster member, cluster detail, you, you get it. Um, yeah, okay, hopefully you, 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 you uh, wipe out to your phone and, uh, and vote. Okay, great. Um, now I'm, I'm going to hand it to Carlos to talk about uh, why we have this uh, node feature group API that will be very helpful for the class API. Yeah, so Ryan mentioned, oh. <laughs> I'm going to be very quick. So Ryan mentioned it, uh, also having customers and provisioners. So the idea of the no feature group is to have a provisioner to the cluster API, uh, to the cluster inventory. Sorry, my head is wrapping around names. So uh, the no feature group is going to be fitted by NFD. For those who might not know NFD, that's a quick 101, is a project to create labels, annotations, and it has grown to the point that it is now supporting a topology aware scheduling with a topology updater, and now we also added a garbage collector. Uh, basically, NFD provides an API for you to discover all the features in your cluster uh, in a per node basis, right? So it would advertise a node feature CR, one per node. And how can you configure what NFD is going to discover is that we already have an existing feature that is called the node feature rule on which you can have match features on like you only want to discover a specific memory, CPU, kernel, uh, like NFD is, uh, is very extensive and is, and is very feature rich. So based on these APIs that NFD already provide, we want to propose the node feature group API. And it's basically a way to create groups of nodes or groups of systems based on this rule uh, feature set that NFD already has. So we are proposing the node feature group API that basically will look like this, right? So it would be another API, so an extra CRD that NFD is going to handle. And by creating rules, you can create lists of nodes in your cluster. Why this is important, uh, as Ryan was kind of like pointing to other talks, uh, I've been in some talks where they talk about multi-cluster as something easy, and uh, something like uh, I was in a multi-cluster, uh, in a multi-queue talk, where they say that you can deploy a job on any cluster and just kill one cluster, create another cluster, and, and keep them running. Uh, some business logics are not that simple, and sometimes you want to know which clusters has a specific features and which cluster have a specific configurations. At some point, uh, your business logic will also want to have a specific drivers, a specific kernel configurations. So you want to know where those nodes, where those specific configurations are, uh, and even to the point to data locality, right? Like you want to have a, a list of the nodes that have the data already downloaded, so your workloads are going to run faster instead of trying to download them. Right? So this API is going to be feeding the cluster inventory. And how is it going to be feeding the cluster inventory? Basically, we propose two models, right? The push model on where the cluster inventory is just going to have like a pointer to the node feature group API on each worker cluster. And then the controller, the scheduler on the manager cluster is going to use that to then make decisions. But this doesn't play along with some uh, proxy or some uh, network configurations, so we also propose a, a pool model on which NFD is going, to, uh, or the worker cluster itself is going to be pushing the NFD API, so the no feature group, into the cluster, uh, the manager cluster, and then you can make decisions there based on your worker clusters. Like this, uh, the pool model is more designed for those uh, proxy configurations, those VPN configurations on which some nodes are going to be isolated and they only have network permissions to like pull but not uh, be, uh, get push information. So basically what we propose here is that the no feature group uh, that is going to be handled by NFD is going to be a feeder, a provisioner to the 
cluster inventory API. That way, your business logic, right, like, uh, because there is Karmada, there is QMultiCluster, and other projects that are coming into the ecosystem, they can then just use these APIs as information to make uh, an informed decision, and they can make like a smart a scheduling routing by using these two APIs. Again, the, uh, this is uh, an invitation for uh, joining the node feature group and the cluster inventor, uh, inventory conversation. These are proposed APIs. They are still not implemented. I think the cap just got accepted for 1.30. Uh, and uh, also, the node feature group is, is going to be into the next NFD release that will come uh, maybe like two weeks after KubeCon. So like these APIs are still in alpha, and we want feedback from the community. This talk was mostly to like bring the conversation to KubeCon to get feedback, because we already got a customer that is Q, right? But we want more customers, more people saying what works from these APIs and what really we are putting a lot of effort and really doesn't work. So we want uh, you joining the conversation. Uh, you are welcome. Uh, so this QR code will take you to the SIG multi-cluster. Uh, please join the conversation, go to the meetings, and say, what do you need extra from the API as the Q uh, community already did? So the Q community joined the meeting and they are already proposing changes to the API. So, they, so Q can use these APIs to make a smarter bash scheduling decisions. So like that, that would be a nice thing to have. Q that is a uh, upstream project and it's going to be using these APIs to, to make bash scheduling better for Kubernetes. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming again.